Hello guys. Hi. Welcome to Lead Electrical Academy. In this session, I will explain the TS Transpose Sub-Engineer Examination Previous Year Question Paper was conducted on 25th February 2018. So, coming to the first question. The reactance offered by a capacitor to an alternating current of frequency 50 Hz is 20 ohms. If the frequency is increased to 100 Hz, the reactance becomes. So F1 is given as 50 Hz and the Xc1 is 20 ohms. The frequency is increased to 100 Hz. Now what is Xc2? If you know the relationship between the Xc1 and frequency, it is a 30 seconds answer to solve this question. Xc is inversely proportional to frequency. Xc2 by Xc1 is equal to F1 by F2. And from this, Xc2 is equal to Xc1 into F1 by F2. So what is Xc1 is 20 into 50 divided by 100. That should be equal to 10 ohms. Otherwise, by seeing this question, if you know the relationship between the Xc versus frequency, as the frequency is uh, doubled from 50 Hz to 100 Hz, obviously the reactance value will be half directly 10 ohms. Why? Because both are having inverse relationship. And uh, coming to the second question, an AC source of 200 volts VRMS supplies an active power of 600 watts and the reactive power of 800 where the RMS current drawn from the source. So what is the active power formula? So VI cos phi that should be equal to 600 watts. So here he is not mentioned the three phase or single phase better to take a single phase because the voltage which is given is 200. And the Q is equal to V A sin phi that is 800 watts. We can write the complex power or apparent power S is equal to under root of P square plus Q square. So under root of 600 square plus 800 square then I am getting 1000 volt ampere. So S is equal to it is a product of RMS value of the voltage into RMS value of the current so 1000 is equal to VRMS is given as 200 into IRMS IRMS is equal to 5 amperes and option B is correct and coming to the third question a 100 milli inductor carries a sinusoidal current of 1 ampere RMS at a frequency of 50 Hz, the average power dissipated by the inductor. C is given the data only inductor. Inductor values matra on a kitchen, resistor evaledu, in K element could evaledu. So the average power through pure inductor, the average power through pure inductor is always zero. The average power through pure capacitor is also zero. The average power through pure resistor is equal to VRMS into IRMS. So, in a given data, maybe the given data is equal to average power dissipated by inductor. Directly, you can put it as zero. That's why inductor does not store AC. Positive of cycle story is going to be negative of cycle release is going to be that's why the average power is zero. If you draw the waveform of voltages and the current is lagging, inductive current is always lagging by 90 degrees. So this is the inductive current. By taking this product, these two products, then you will get uh, power waveform 
and this is a power waveform power waveform is like this so this is instantaneous power waveform and uh, negative half cycle is equal to positive half cycle and uh, negative half cycle is equal to positive half cycle and the average power is zero and coming to the fourth question as compared to Kerala gauge induction motor a wound rotor induction motor is preferred when the major consideration is high starting torque, low windage losses, low speed operation, low starting torque. Low starting torque is a disadvantage and slow speed of operation is also. <coughs> low windage loss it may be advantage, but advantage of the induction motor. But coming to the question, he is asking the comparison between the scale gauge type of uh, induction motor and wound rotor. Starting dark equation is K into E2 square R2 by R2 square plus X2 square. During starting condition, the slip value is equal to 1. Where X2 is greater than R2 and the starting dark is directly proportional to R2. We can add an external resistance in a wound rotor induction motor with the help of a slip rings that is not possible in a steel gauge type of induction motor. That's why if more resistance is added, the starting torque is also very very high. We prefer wound rotor induction motor for getting high starting torque. High starting torque is not the wound rotor induction motor may be used as. And uh, flame proof motors A. So it is a D option directly, you can write it. Explosive atmospheres. So this is extra term. So which is uh, used in flame proof motors used in, used in paper mills or steel mills or uh, moist atmospheres and explosive atmospheres and this can be used in explosive atmosphere and the candela is a unit of so first option is luminous plus so this unit is lumen wavelength units are meter and the frequency units are hertz so by eliminating three options you can blindly select the D option and luminous intensity units are candela. So, inverse square law and Lombard's question law are associated with. So, it is not related to electricity, it is not related to wavelength and frequency, and it is related to illumination. That is, A option is correct. The ratio of illumination, when everything is clean to the illumination under normal working condition is, so it is not a utilization factor and the absorption factor is also wrong answer, the waste light factor is also wrong answer and uh, depreciation factor. These are the direct definitions. So now the A option is correct for the 8th question. The electrodes used for projection welding are so it is flat and uh, larger in diameter flat and larger in diameter so induction heating takes place induction heating takes place conducting but not magnetic material insulating materials and conducting and magnetic material so it can be used for conductive materials may be magnetic or non-magnetic nature also so the b option is correct and the most modern method of heating in food processing unit so this is also related to utilization question heating and uh, nowadays we are using the electric current heating that is b option is correct and the steel pipes are manufactured manufactured by 
So the first one is arc welding, second argon arc welding, third resistance welding, and D is the thermite welding. And the steel pipes are manufactured or welded by resistance welding. So you should remember this is also a direct question. So coming to the third question, a 60 watt lamp given a luminous flux of 1500 lumen, its efficiency is. So C the unit is given as lumen per watt. So directly lumen is 1500 divided by 60. So that should be equal to 25. So 25 lumen per watt. So out of these four, the 25 lumen per watt is the correct answer. Cooling of transformers is necessary to load. So reduce the losses. No, reduce humming. Humming means uh, noise. And this is also wrong. Increases the efficiency. So indirectly, maybe it is the correct answer. So if a cooling is provided, the transformers, the losses will be, the heat will be reduces. The major criteria is when current flows through a windings, I square R losses are produced. So as the time progresses, I square R T heat is produced. If the heat is not within the limits, then the insulation failure will be takes place. So that's why the major purpose of cooling of transformers is dissipate the heat generated in the winding. That is the B option is correct. The power loss in open circuit and short circuit test on a transformer gives approximately an amount of. So open circuit test of a single base transformer is to conduct the, is to find out the core losses and short circuit test is to find out the copper losses. And open circuit test is to conduct on a transformer by applying a rated voltage and a rated frequency. But the short circuit test is connected at the reduced voltage at rated frequency. So coming to the options core losses and copper losses, yes, this option is correct. Copper losses and core losses are uh, wrong. Because first he is given as an open circuit test and later copper uh, short circuit test each other. Eddy current losses and uh, hysteric losses respectively. These two losses comes under the category of iron losses only. And hysteric loss and eddy current losses also comes under the category of iron losses. So option is correct. The order efficiency of a transformer is the ratio of General uh, power efficiency and the power efficiency or commercial efficiency it is a ratio of uh, output power by input power into 100 but all the efficiency can be defined for distribution transformer distribution transformer power efficiency can be defined for power transformer power transformer so he is asking <coughs> all day efficiency now that should be equal to output energy in kilowatt hour by input energy in kilowatt hour multiply with 100 then that is called the all day efficiency so kilowatt hour output and kilowatt hour input in a month kilowatt hour output and kilowatt hour input in a day all day you should remember like this so it should be calculated in a day watch so this is output power and input power is a commercial efficiency or power efficiency. Input power and output power is wrong answer.
the ratio of primary to secondary voltage of a transformer is 2 is to 1. The saving in terms of weight of copper required if an auto transformer is used instead of a two winding transformer will be. C. So this is the two winding transformer. This two winding transformer is connected as an auto transformer with ratio of uh, 2 is to 1. So what is the saving in terms of copper? So direct formula that is K times N2 by N1 or V2 by V1 that should be equal to 1 by 2. So 50 percentage copper is saved. So for satisfactory parallel operation of two single base transformers which one of the following is not required to be fulfilled? So, KV rating of the transformer should be equal. Okay, let us see. B option. Transformer should be properly connected with regard to their polarity. Yes, the polarities should be matched. Otherwise, internal circulating currents are flowing through primary sub transformers or secondary sub transformers if properly not connected, and the transformers both are damages. The voltage rating of the primary winding should be suitable for the supply system and this is a necessary condition and this is also a necessary condition. The percentage impedance of the two winding transformer should be equal. This is a sufficient condition, sufficient condition and the KV ratings of the transformer should be equal. And this is a wrong answer. I mean, as for this uh, 18th question, the 18th question ki uh, A is the correct, correct answer. So, which one of the following is not required? Anand? So, B, C, D are required. So, why? Because uh, suppose if a 100 kV transformer is there, so which meets the load of 100 amperes, let us assume, suddenly the load is increased to 20 amperes and you can use uh, approximately I am writing 20 kVA transformer that should be connected in parallel with 100 kVA to meet this extra load. KVA rating equal load also and uh, that is not mandatory also and A option is that. The full load iron loss of certain transformer is 100 watts. What will be iron loss at half load? So iron losses are also called as iron losses are also called constant losses. Iron losses are also called as a constant losses. And uh, whatever the half load or full load or whatever it may be, the iron losses are constant. That is 100 watts. This is uh, uh, B and this one is C. 100 watts is the correct option. And which is a common method of cooling in a power transformer. This air cooling is used to less than 3 MVA of transformer. And this can be used uh, up to 15 MVA. That is uh, uh, less than 15 MVA. We can use the air blast cooling. The air cooling and natural cooling approximately equal. And for a power transformer, the rating is very very large and uh, oil cooling is used for the cooling purpose of a transformer. And uh, coming to the next question, aluminum is not used as winding wire for the armature of a DC machine because as the aluminum has no resistivity. A large winding space is taken by aluminum conductors and creates jointing problems. The thermal conductivity of the aluminum is low. Aluminum has low conductivity as compared to copper. So overall options are correct but why we are not used for the armature of a DC machine is a large winding space is taken by the aluminum conductors and jointing is also creates problems. There is a B option is correct. 
the commutator segments of uh, if you take a commutator of a DC machine so this is commutator let us assume this is a conductor A, B and uh, C D so this is a north pole and south pole are insulated from each other so this commutator segments are insulated each other by a thin layer of so this is a mica insulation it's a very very important object in it the armature of a dc machine is laminated whatever the machine a transformer the machine or transformer or synchronous machines the machine should be laminated means in order to reduce the ad current loss the option is correct Silicon steel is used to in order to reduce the hysteresis loss. Silicon steel is used in order to reduce in order to reduce hysteresis loss. Hysteresis losses can be reduced. But uh, in a question is asking laminations. Laminations are provided in order to reduce the eddy current losses. Three phase induction motors are widely used for industrial purpose because Yes, they are rugged in construction, requires less maintenance and less uh, expensive than other models. This is the correct option. And uh, their speed can be controlled very smoothly over a wide range. So this is the wrong option. They are operating correct. Superior over other. No, this is also wrong answer. And their speed can be controlled very smoothly. This is also wrong answer. They can be, they can be manufactured easily for any HP motor. But uh, A option is the correct. The slip of 400 volts 50 as 3 phase 4 pole induction motor when rotating 1440 rpm. So slip is equal to Ns minus N divided by Ns percentage slip multiplied with 100. So is clearly given 50 as 4 pole. So directly the synchronous speed 120 F divided by P. So 120 into 50 divided by 4, so 1500 RPM. And substitute here, the rotor speed is 1440. So 1500 minus 1440 by 1500 into 100. So that should be equal to 60 by 1500 into 100. So then slip is 4 percentage. C option is correct. The dark slip characteristics of an induction motor is such that for lower values of slip, dark is directly proportional to slip. For higher values of slip, dark is inversely proportional to slip. The second option is for lower values of slip, dark is inversely proportional to slip. And for higher values of slip, dark is directly proportional to slip. So, first of all, we should see the relationship. Electromagnet arc is equal to 180 divided by 2 pi n s s e to square r2 by r2 square plus s x2 whole square. For a small value of slip, under starting condition, slip is small. Why? Because the rotor speed is approximately equal to synchronous speed, the slip value is small ns minus n divided by ns this is uh, n is approximately approximately equal to synchronous speed so operation with synchronous speed is not possible but it is nearer to the synchronous speed the slip value is small the sx2 square sx2 whole square is less than that of the r2 then for lower values of slip electromagnetic arc is directly proportional to s for higher values of slip, what will happen? Higher values of slip, the rotor speed will be decreases and the slip value is drastically increases. Uh, sorry, slip value is increases. This SX2 square is not negligible, is greater than that of R2. Then the electromagnetic arc is directly proportional to S divided by S square. You should follow the inverse uh, characteristics. For this, uh, Question 
for lower values of sleep talk is directly proportional to sleep yes this is the lower values of sleep for higher values of sleep talk is inversely proportional to sleep the option is correct the power input in block rota test performed on three phase induction motor is approximately equal to so it looks like a it is approximately equal to short circuit test on single phase transformer so block rota test is to find out the copper losses an induction motor can call it as a just like a transformer with short circuit is secondary block rota test is to find out the copper losses that is i square r losses in the winding and open circuit test is to find out the constant losses so h square losses is a wrong answer ad current losses is also wrong answer iron losses in the core is wrong answer so b option is correct block rota test of an induction motor corresponding in case of a transformer is just i discussed the it is a short circuit operation b option is correct in case of shaded pole motor shading coils are used the shading coils are used to to produce the rotating magnetic field rotating magnetic field so here the c option is correct in ac series motor armature coils are usually connected to the commutator so it is connected through resistors in a single phase induction motor and commutator motors the phase difference between the currents in main and axillary windings is achieved by so if you take a single phase induction motor so we have a resistance here also i have a resistance this is a rotor and the current which is flowing through the main winding and this is called the starting winding if both are displaced by 90 degrees then only rotating magnetic field is produced so a option is correct a dc series motors when connected across an ac supply ac supply will develop the torque in the same direction not develop any torque draw dangerously like current develop a pulsating torque so for dc series motor if you are giving an ac supply the ia is positive for positive of cycle ia is negative for negative of cycle whatever it may be armature torque is directly proportional to ia square minus of ia whole square for negative of cycle is also ia square it will produces a unidirectional torque u directional torque anyway sparks are produced but not developed any torque is wrong answer draw dangerously current is also wrong answer develop a pulsating torque no it develops a unidirectional torque so a option is the correct answer <coughs> A inverse motor is one. So this is also works with AC supply and DC supply. It is a modification of the AC series motor, and it can be works with AC and DC. The C option is correct answer. And generally, this inverse motor is used in sewing machines. కుట్టు మెషిన్లో కుట్టడానికి అంటే ఐ మీన్ కుట్టడానికి యూజ్ చేస్తారు అది మోటర్ యూనివర్సల్ మోటర్ కనెక్ట్ చేస్తాం ప్రాబబ్లీ అకరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ త్రీ ఫేస్ స్టార్ట్ సర్క్యూటెడ్ ఫాల్ట్ ఇన్ త్రీ ఫేస్ చేస్తాం సో ఇఫ్ త్రీ ఫేస్ టు గ్రౌండ్ ఫాల్ట్ సో ద అకరెన్స్ విల్ బి వెరీ వెరీ లెస్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ అప్రాక్సిమేట్లీ 
टू टू थ्री परसेंट मोस्ट ऑफ द फॉल्स आर लाइन टू ग्राउंड फॉल्स ओनली एंड नेक्स्ट फॉल्स इज एर फॉल्स करेंट फॉल्स एंड द लीस्ट अकरेंस द फॉल्ट इज ट्रिपल एल जी फॉल्ट सो फर्स्ट परसेंटेज मोर परसेंटेज ले जी फॉल्स आफ्टर दैट एल एल फॉल्स आफ्टर दैट एल एल जी एंड ट्रिपल एल जी इज अकरेंस इज वेरी वेरी लो इज टू टू थ्री परसेंटेज Which one of the following is the correct statement? Correct. Circuit breaker and isolator do the same function. Circuit breaker can only break the circuit, while isolator can break as well as make. So this is the wrong answer. If we take a circuit breaker, circuit breaker under normal operating condition, so it will be closed. Whenever fault will be occurred, the circuit breaker will be open circuit condition. It will make or break the circuit, but isolator isolates, so can only break the circuit. For thirty-five, the D option is correct. The primary component which ensues, so where the relay senses the signals and it will pass the signal to the circuit breaker, then the circuit breaker will open. And the first one, primary component which ensues, is the relay. The purpose of backup production is backup production is guard against failure of primary. So this is a very very important objective bit because we have suppose we are uh, taking a one generator and we are using the primary. This this you can as a secondary production. After that you can go for the primary production system. Either you can use uh, any production system. Suppose if this one is fail at two milliseconds, this has to be operated, but it is not operated. Means it is not open circuited. Then the secondary backup will be work properly. So. Is a guard against the failure of the primary. Basic quantity is measured in distance relay. So distance relays are three types. One is a reactance relay and uh, impedance relay, and third one is admittance relay. Admittance relay. So these uh, three are impedances in terms of impedance. That the A option is current correct answer. The arcing contacts in a circuit breaker are made up of. This is very very important. And uh, copper tungsten wire. Circuit breakers usually operate under when it will be operated. So during transient state of short circuit current. So transient state of short circuit current. Steady state of short circuit current after DC component has ceased. So subtransient state of short circuit current only the circuit breaker will be operated. So a match price production differential production for start transformer the CT secondary connection in the primary and. Uh, Secondary windings of the transformer would be in the form of. So this is not a. This is a delta by y. So if it is a delta by y, the opposite connections delta should be become now star, and the star should be connected in delta. Star by delta. So that is the star by delta is the B option is the correct answer. A thin transformer is used to. The ethylene transformer improve neutralize current capacity, avoid over heating of transformer no, and provide artificial ethylene and avoid harmonics. So, so we are providing the artificial ethylene. There is a C option is correct. Percentage differential production is used to prevent. 
so percentage differential production is used to prevent the inter-turn faults, like reload, sectional faults, magnetizing current. So that is uh, 43 is the uh, magnetizing current is best option. The function of steel wire in AC is a conductor is to compensate it for skin effect now, take care of suggest, provide uh, uh, reduce the inductance now, provide additional mechanical strength. For getting a mechanical strength of the conductor, you can use steel wire in AC sir. So C option is correct. The sag of conductors in a transmission line is 2.5 meters. When the span is 250 meters, so now if the height of the supporting towers is increased by 25 percentage, the SAG formula is W square by 80 and it is independent of the height. It is independent of the height. So it is remain unchanged. The insulators used in 132 kV transmission lines are so we can use uh, 132 kV uh, almost 8 to 10 discs are used and disc type are used and this is uh, for uh, up to 33 kV and shaggy type is also used for the distribution purpose and anyway it is pin and shaggy type is not the correct answer disc type on it correct Corona losses is increases with so write down the formula 244 by delta F plus 25 root R by D V phase minus V D whole square so this is a corona loss formula where V is a critical receptive voltage and 21.1 mv delta r ln of uh, d by r so decrease in conductor size and increase in sub supply frequency increase in both conductor size and supply frequency so one option is that if the frequency is increases and the corona loss is increases yes in the radius uh, increases what will happen the vd will be increases so, if a VD will be increased, then corona loss will be decreased. So, that's why the radius should be decreased, then uh, critical disruptive voltage decreases, and the corona loss will be increased. The A option is correct also. The inductance of a single phase 2 wire power transmission line per kilometer gets doubled. Inductance of a single phase 2 wire power transmission line per kilometer doubled when the distance between the wire is doubled wire is increased by four times wire is increased as a square of the original distance l is directly proportional to ln of d if l is doubled so l2 is equal to l that means if it is a ln of d square only then it is 2 ln of d then 2 times of l so y is increased as the square of the original distance. The capacitance of an overhead transmission line increases. C increases. Increase in mutual geometrical mean distance. So GMD. And increase the height of the conductor. Yes, height of the conductor is increased. Select the correct answer from the following. So if GMD is increases, GMD is increases and the capacitance is inversely proportional, right? This will be decreases and height of the conductor increases, then the capacitance value will be decreases. Decreases. So for uh, both options are wrong, both A and V are false. So coming to the 50th question, the concept of an electrically short medium and long line is primarily based on the so the first option is nominal voltage of the line and second is physical length of the line and third wavelength of the line d power transmitted over the line 
so generally so it depends upon the wavelength of the line the option c is correct because ve velocity of the line so velocity of the wave v is equal to f lambda and the wavelength lambda is equal to v divided by f so this is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by for 50 hertz then the wavelength you are getting approximately i think 6000 kilometers so some of the bits for a 500 hertz frequency and 60 kilometers line can be treated as why i'm telling means so it depends upon the wavelength it is not depends upon the physical length of the line and nominal voltage of the line so lambda is equal to velocity is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by for the frequency is 500 so approximately you are getting 600 kilometers so greater than greater than 60 kilometers then it acts as a medium line and more than 160 kilometers it acts as a long line so it is 600 kilometers means it is a long line if it is operated at 500 frequency 500 edge frequency the short line can be modeled as long line and that depends on the wavelength of the line that's the option is correct so just now i have written velocity is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second so then c option is correct option under no road con conditions the current in a transmission line because of the capacitance effect so the purpose of guardering in transmission line is to so these are called the guarderings in a transmission lines so these uh, Red line mark mark chase na redu unna ni gora guardings. Hindu kiu shastra mante. First option reduces the capacitance of the lowest unit, increases the capacitance of the lowest unit, reduces the transmission line losses, increases the transmission losses. You can see here. So this is about the guardry. We are connecting the different values of capacitors. different values of the capacitor and it is electrically connected to the conductor so so this is about the conductor and to the metal body and by connecting the different values of the capacitors the potential at the each and every point so this point this point so at these points is uniform and it reduces the earth capacitance. One more property is it reduces the earth capacitance of the lowest unit and provides uniform or equal distribution of the voltage at the disk. So the option is reduces the earth capacitance, reduces the earth capacitance of the lowest unit. And the coming to the 54 question. The type of distributor used in uh, re residential areas. So residential areas we can use uh, three phase four wire system because uh, we are required a neutral point and the distribution side the secondary of the transformer is, all, is always connected in star because we require a single phase and three phase four wire is used. So option C is correct. And uh, stringing chart are useful. This is our string stringing chart is used to find out the sag in the conductor. The yeah, option is correct. The sag of a transmission line is least affected due to the so S is equal to W L square by A T, and uh, it depends upon the atmospheric temperature, ice deposition also, and uh, weight of the conductor also it depends, and uh, least affected the current through the conductor the option d is correct the self gmd method is used to calculate so that is called the gmr so r dash that should be equal to 0 0.7 eight eighteen to r l is directly proportional to 
GMD by GMR. That is called the self GMD. But the capacitance is equal to is directly proportional to one by GMD by R only. This is not R dash. So the capacitance options are wrong. And uh, here it is independent of the resistances. And the self GMD method is used to evaluate only inductance. And the hollow conductors are used in transmission. So this is about the hollow conductor. The effective diameter is increases. If a diameter is increases, the radius is also increases. If a radius is increases, VD is directly proportional to R. VD is directly proportional to R. So VD is equal to 21.1 MV delta R. So, and this R value increases means VD is also increases. If VD increases, the critical disruptive voltage increases. The corona loss formula 244 by delta into F plus 25 root R by D. V phase minus VD whole square. And this VD increases, then the corona loss will be decreases to reduce the corona. So sometimes is there, I think, 21.1 MV delta R. This is called the critical disruptive voltage. Now, wattmeter has a full scale range of 2500. So if you take a wattmeter, the wattmeter range will be 2500 watts. And uh, it has an error of plus or minus 1. So e, true value. So true value means it is a limiting error. So the range of uh, reading, if a true power is, sorry, this one is uh, 1250. The True power is equal to 1250 and uh, 1 percentage, 1 percentage, so that uh, limiting error is 1 percentage, so 1 percentage of the true value 1250 by 100, so that should be equal to 12.5 volts and uh, plus or minus 12.5 volts, so this is plus or minus. Then from the original reading, so 1250 add 12.5, 12.5, then you are getting 1262.5. So in terms of 0.5, this is the correct answer. And 1250 minus 12.5, that is 1237.5. This is the lowest reading, is 1237.5, and the highest reading is 1262.5 watts. And the nominal ratio of the current transformer is what is meant by nominal ratio. The nominal ratio can be represented with K subscript N. And it is a ratio of rated primary current. Rated primary current. Winding current over by rated secondary winding current. Secondary winding current. So I think the B option is the current. When measuring power with an electrodynamometer type wattmeter in a circuit where the load current is large, so if the load current is large then the current coil may be damages. So that's why the pressure coil, what are the pressure coil is there? The pressure coil is connected nearer to the load. So one more thing, I square R losses are reduced. I square R losses are uh, reduced. If this is connected to the load and uh, if the pressure coil is connected, so it is response to V square by R. I think B is a the pressure coil should be connected on the load side. So the option D is cut. The domestic supply voltage of 220 volts. So this is the RMS value only. So RMS value. C option is correct. The power factor of the system is kept high in order to reduce the load handling capacity of the electrical system, increase the voltage regulation from line losses 
just so wrong because power is is equal to va cos phi if the power factor is high then the current is less i square on losses is less and uh, if the power factor is designed the maximum inclination of the capacities of generators and lines and transformers stress losses are is maximum inclination so output will be more for the generators lines transfer lines and transformers the d option is the correct answer two waves of alternating voltages of same frequency are out of phase so alternating voltages which is having a same frequency out of phase means so blindly you can select 180 degrees the option is correct in a series rl circuit at resonance so what will happen at resonance current is maximum or not at resonance z is a minimum because r value only so xl is equal to xc then the impedance will be minimum and the current is maximum current is maximum so if you draw the curve between the impedance versus frequency this is a curve and uh, current versus frequency this white line is current versus frequency this is a maximum value of current so i maximum is equal to v by z minimum then the option a is the correct answer so this is about the technical and uh, 66 question identify the national leader who was popularly known as grand old man of the indian politics so dada bhai norozi who discovered a printing press so gutenberg and one must be loyal to one's country the c option is correct she has after has verb 3 you can use that is sung a song identify the kind of sentence given below he passed the test so there is a simple test and uh, nayankara system was an important military system that is introduced kakatiyas kakatiyas are introduced in military military system who built the popular bhadrachalam temple bhadrachalam temple ne ఎవరు నిర్మించారు కంచర్ల గోపన్న భద్రాచలం టెంపుల్ ని నిర్మించారు కుంతల జలపాతం ఎక్కడ ఉంది కుంతల జలపాతం అనేది ఇస్ అ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ అది ఆదిలాబాద్ లో ఉంది ఎయిట్ జీరో ఎయిట్ ఫైవ్ మీటర్ బస్ హ్యాస్ హౌ మెనీ హార్డ్వేర్ ఇంటర్ప్స్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ హౌ మెనీ హార్డ్వేర్ ఇంటర్ప్స్ సో ఎయిట్ జీరో ఎయిట్ ఫైవ్ మీటర్ బస్ హ్యాస్ ఫైవ్ హార్డ్వేర్ ఇంటర్ప్స్ వాట్ విల్ బి ది అవుట్ పుట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ so main float and double is given and uh, so finally uh, i have u and the size of mac address and ip4 address is so 48 bits and 32 bits c option is correct find the missing term in 824 12 18 and 54 that is 36 is the missing term and 36 is the missing term so you can uh, check that 8 uh, so 8 3 ja 24 and uh, 12 3 ja 36 18 3 ja 54 18 into 324 12 into 3 36 18 into 3. so this is the missing term is 36 x and y are brothers x y are brothers c and d are sisters and x son is d's brother so x son is d's brother how is y related to c so i think it is uh, so x son brother means d is a daughter 
data and c and d are the sisters c and d are sisters and uh, c is also x daughter and y is the x of brother so he is uncle 78 what percentage of 180.50 is uh, 36.1 so 180.50 by 36.1 180.50 what percentage of 180.50 180.50 0.36.1 so where x is equal to 36.1 divided by 180.50 into 100 so that should be equal to 20 so this is uh, the 2 i think 180.50.2.2 then 0.200 is 20 identify the author of sanskrit drama abhijnana shakuntalam so abhijnana shakuntalam ఎవరు రాసి రచించారు అంటే కాళిదాసులు సో దిస్ ఈజ్ అట్ క్వశ్చన్ సో థ్యాంక్ యూ గైస్ లైక్ చేయండి షేర్ చేయండి అండ్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ చేయండి